Massachusetts, and uh, I dropped him a, an email, and he was very encouraging. He said, "Yeah, why don't you start your own show? It would be great." Um, so, 2006, I registered my own domain. It's a frogslife.net, and uh, in July started uh, the It's a Frog's Life acoustic podcast. Uh, I'm into acoustic music, uh, and this show. Um, when it started, it 
it featured uh, acoustic music from the UK. Um, I thought if I went global, then there's just too much music out there. I wanted to do something to support uh, music here in the UK. Uh, and so. You're listening to Graham Holland, and it's a Frog's Life acoustic podcast. The sound works, yes. Um, that was the voiceover that uh, a friend of mine in the States, Linda Emails, did for me. And, so, so, and uh, I start the show each time with that. Um, so, 2006, uh, October, I joined the Association of Music Podcasting. This is a group of like minded po- music podcasters right around the world uh, who. Um, get together to support uh, each other and to to fly the flag for independent music and to get the uh, give a voice to independent musicians that's musicpodcasting.org and uh, down over there is a, a fellow member of the association it is peer assessed so you apply to take uh, to, to take part uh, to become a member and the other members assess your show to say whether it's uh, uh, good enough quality uh, they let me in anyway and must have been something wrong with the system at the time uh, but I became a member of the Association of Music Podcasting, uh, and that's been a good fun as well. Uh, uh, 2006 uh, was the first and uh, last podcast convention, um, uh, ra- ra- riding on the, the, uh, the crest of the, the podcasting boom, uh, which didn't quite boom as much as people had hoped. Um, and it was a formal conference down in London. Uh, speakers at the front uh, on the table um, and it was okay. I met CC Chapman for the first time, they flew him over for it, so it was great to meet the guy who uh, inspired me to start podcasting. Um, uh, but as I said, uh, they struggled with that financially um, and uh, they only did the one. But, uh, 2007, um, I discovered Photoshop. Um, I did a bit of a tutorial, uh, put together a new logo uh, which allowed me to, to uh, highlight the uh, different specials. And the logo is, is embedded as album art uh, onto all the files, so when it pops up in iTunes you get this uh, frog uh, uh, leering at you uh, from your uh, iPod or uh, your, your desktop. Um, May, uh, I introduced a show called uh, The Instrumental Rewind. Um, I was playing music, bedding music on my shows whilst I was talking underneath me, um, underneath my voice and uh, it was, um, I always thought it was a shame that there was such great music and I was talking over the top of it and uh, I wasn't at that time, I was only playing songs, I wasn't playing instrumental tracks in full so I thought it would be a good idea if I put all those, uh, all of those tracks together in one show and played it um, to give them uh, those musicians have a chance to be featured as well. Uh, so um, the Instrumental Rewind show came along and uh, every uh, every eight months or so I uh, put a new one out and uh, that, that ticks along nicely. Um, uh, in June I hosted my first edition of Ant New Music Weekly. Uh, this is put together by the Association of Music Podcasting. And it's a weekly show hence the name, New Music Weekly, and each of the members of the Association of Music Podcasting is able to submit uh, a song from one of their shows, uh, and the different hosts each week hosts it, uh, and it's lots of fun. It's lots of fun to host, um, as Dan will attest to, uh, because you're introducing music that's been submitted by other podcasters, so you never know what you're going to get, and as a listener, you never know what you're going to get. So you might have acoustic on one hand, like hip hop, uh, a bit of um, a bit of electronica, uh, some uh, metal. Um, so There's a big mismatch, but if you're looking for new music, uh, then that's a really good, really good place to start. Is Amps New Music Weekly, and uh, the end of, uh, of my first year, uh, I survived for a year, which is something to celebrate in the podcasting world. It's something to celebrate. Because so many podcasting, particularly those that started in the early years, but it's still true today. Uh, so many of them pod fade. I don't even heard the phrase pod fade before. It's when they, when uh, a new podcast launches a blaze of glory, uh, and you know, it's got the first episode and the hosts are all enthusiastic, and then the second episode uh, is going great. This isn't the third episode. Uh, maybe a few months later, and then uh, and then it disappears. 
and you're looking at me on iTunes thinking, where's the next show? And it doesn't happen. That's pod, pod fading. In fact, there's a couple of shows that I started listening to last year that only lasted for one episode. Um, so it, it, it's quite a, an occasion to, to reach the first year of podcasting. I think anyone reaches that, which reaches one year, can, uh, can officially give up um, with their with their heads held high. Um, so that's it. The, the only other thing uh, for 2007 um, was a pod camp. On the, I just didn't want to waste the photo. It's nice, eh? uh, this was uh, this was uh, the, the child of uh, podcast con. Uh, and it was an unconference, and I got a lot more out of it because of the, the, the format and uh, much easier to share uh, with other podcasters and other people who were there. Uh, those, who, those who were at the, who been to a camp here in Liverpool will know how well that format works. Um, so if we do one again, if we ever do one again, and we were talking about, about it uh, a few of them before, maybe doing a, another pod camp or a, a blog world or something that, that the Americans do that, that we don't tend to do in the UK, then no, we, we might do that. Um, I'm going to move on to the knots and bolts uh, of the podcast, how I put it together. Um, and first off, I record it. I record it on, and uh, it's not very technical, this. Um, I record it on an IBM ThinkPad with a microphone, a headset, plugged into it. Um, the only way I can get away with this, uh, sound quality wise, is because this, uh, this l lovely little laptop uh, has a really, really good sound card in it. Um, I've tried doing this on other laptops, I've even tried doing it on my MacBook. Um, and the sound isn't, isn't that good. Um, that's how I record it. I use a piece of software called Cast Blaster. I record all my shows live. Um, it's just, just the way I, I like to do it, uh, more of a natural feel to, to it from, my, from me on the presentation side of things. And also now if I, if I started recording bits and editing, recording <coughs> editing, I would probably say me three times uh, uh, as long uh, to get it all done. So Castbass is great um, because you load it up as a rack and cart system like they're doing it in radio stations. You press the buttons and the audio plays. Um, and you can set it to automatically lower the volume when you're speaking and the volume goes back up when you turn the microphone off. So um, that's really good. There isn't a Mac equivalent, I'm ashamed to say, as a, as a Mac head. Um, there is actually uh, one called, uh, it's a program called Ubercaster, but it's not for sale at the moment. I think having some developmental problems. Um, there are other ways to do it, but uh, I'm sticking with Castblaster for the moment. Uh, then uh, the hosting, so I've recorded the show, I've got a, a, an audio file, which in my case is an mp3. Uh, Dan does mp3s and he does odd versions as well. Um, you need to host them somewhere on the internet. Uh, so I started off in uh, 2006 uh, self-hosting. I thought, I've got a nice little hosting uh, package for, 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 the, uh, for the domain. I'll, I'll put them in on my, my own web space. Uh, very quickly realised it's going to run out of space. Um, space is one of the issues if you're going to self-host your own files. There are other issues as well, like the, the speed in which the, the server that your files are on actually services um, uh, the requests uh, for the podcast. Bandwidth, are there any bandwidth restrictions? Um, you know, are you going to reach uh, 500 downloads and then have the internet provider pull the plug? Uh, because uh, you, you've, uh, you've uh, over, overstepped the mark. Uh, and also in terms of conditions, there are some um, internet providers out there that actually stipulate within the terms, terms and conditions that you, you're not uh, hosting uh, audio files or media files uh, for use of podcasting. Uh, so that's something that, that worth checking. So I realised that's going to run out of space anyway. So. Uh, I moved over to Libsyn in October, and Libsyn um, is a service which is geared up for supporting podcasting. And I got it free as a member of the Association of Music Podcasting with a comp deal, and in return for the free hosting, um, we played a stinger in our show to, to just uh, get the, the name and the URL for Libsyn out there. Um, unlimited bandwidth, which is great for podcasters, particularly if you've got a, a successful show. Uh, and the, the space that you've allocated is on a rolling basis. So one month after you've uploaded a, a file, it goes down into the 
archive server and that space uh, is freed up for you to upload some more uh, content. Uh, and uh, so that was great, Libsyn.com. Uh, and then uh, last year, uh, February, uh, Libsyn pulled the plug on that deal, which meant I needed to find another home for my audio content. I moved it over to Medio.com, which is what uh, Podshow uh, used to be. Uh, it used to be called Podshow. Um, the same guys that the, the, the PodSafe mu music network. And uh, I, I'm, I moved all the files there and updated all the links. Um, and then, guess what? 12 months later, they pulled the plug on the podcast, an audio podcast, um, particularly, um, particularly uh, nasty way, actually. They just, I know it says in the terms and conditions they can withdraw the service at any time, but they just pulled the plug. And there were thousands of podcasters around the world that whose shows just died because of that um, and the vast majority of them never got an explanation, never got an email to say, you know, we're going to pull the plug, do you want to move all your content? Um, which is a real shame because, you know, because they've lost a lot of goodwill over that. Um, so uh, I eventually uh, moved all my uh, audio content to archive.org, the internet archive. Uh, it's free. Uh, uh, in perpetuity, uh, and it's contributing to the, the archive of the internet uh, for future generations as well. Um, it is uh, slightly slower, it's, it's better than it used to be, um, and it doesn't have the stats that some of the other services like Ellipsin or Blueberry uh, or Popra um, have built into them, but it's free. <laughs> what, can, what can I say? Uh, so that's the hosting, that's where my files are at the moment. And I'm not, I'm not one of the people who are really concerned about looking and checking how many people are downloading my show, um, as long as I know people are listening and they do. So uh, that's the hosting. Uh, the web side of things. Um, I uh, started off uh, the show with the blog, uh, blogger site, which is now owned by uh, Google. Um, I was able to uh, put that onto a subdomain using that CNET forwarding, getting technical here, you don't need to worry about that. Um, but it was free and it provided a feed for the show as well. Um, feed Burnock, if anyone's doing an audio a podcast or any podcasting or uh, at all, I would recommend you use Feed Burner because uh, Feed Burner allows you to point uh, your feed uh, to wherever you want to point it to. So for those people who are on Mevio and Mevio pulled, pulled the plug, if they've been using FeedBurner, all they'd need to do is to, to remove uh, the Mevio address, add the new address, and point, the new, uh, point their subscribers to the new feed. Uh, it's got stats built into it, subscription built into it as well. Uh, that's on by Google as well now. Um, so it's all uh, all uh, links in. Um, and then uh, iTunes, register your, uh, your podcast with iTunes using the feed burner address once again. Um, so that if you do need to, to move your, your show notes or move the, 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 the original feed, then you're not losing listeners and that uh, you, can, you can carry on without uh, them doing any, any difference. Um, the only difference uh, between then and now is uh, uh, back in February I moved from Blogger to uh, WordPress. I host, uh, host it myself now, and, uh, but I still use a uh, feed burner. Um, this is Social Media Cafe. I'm going to look at some of the, uh, the things that I do um, to, to make the, the podcast more social. Social is about, for me it's about not just sitting uh, in my uh, study uh, in front of my laptop, uh, recording and hoping that people are listening. Social for me is actually getting out there, either physically or on the internet and getting other people involved, getting, like, me getting involved in what they're doing as well. And so it's adding the social to it. So one of the first things I started doing was um, getting out there, doing field recordings and uh, interviewing. And there were Dave Thackeray at the back there, he does uh, quite a bit of a field recording when, when, the, when the league takes up because he interviewed me down at the river from uh, uh, last year. Um, so I've got out and done a few specials uh, covering the music events. Um, 
this is an event uh, back, back in 2007, interviewed this guy, uh, James Norton, who was now uh, Jay Norton, who was on The Voice on Saturday night, on the Sunday night, so we're rooting for Jay on the, on the BBC One. Um, another show was that this one walk, recording audio, audio walking down uh, Ball Street, and there's just the sounds, just adds that extra layer and the extra texture to it, the, the seagulls and the, the buskers and the shoppers. Uh, I really enjoy doing that. Um, and uh, as, another, as an EP launch, I, I covered, and uh, I got to interview one of my musical heroes, and that's Leon Wasselson. Um, <laughs> uh, and uh, it got me into audacity. Because um, obviously I was recording stuff and I needed to work out how to uh, how to edit it and uh, open source, free, uh, brilliant. So uh, I love what else I did. Um, all the other things to add the social. Uh, I've already mentioned the Ant New Music Weekly. Uh, I'm involved in another show called the Made in the UK Show, which is a group of UK podcasters every two weeks put out a show uh, uh, where we feature music from the UK and it's uh, one of these collaborative uh, shows uh, with three presenters on each of the shows um, but also getting, getting my show's name mentioned week after week on Amateur New Music Weekly uh, is a great way to, to get the name of the show out there once the show's out there and people come to listen to the show uh, and then they discover the, mu the music that's there and hopefully they go and sort of listen to the, the, the music that they like um, and maybe even buy some of their music. Uh, and also, uh, it allowed me to do this because the name of my show has got mentioned uh, week after week. If you are a great fan another acoustic podcast from Liverpool, then do check out Graham Holland's It's a Frog's Life. It's a Frog Life Acoustic Podcast. It's a Frog's Life Acoustic Podcast. It's a Frog's Life Acoustic Podcast. I'm Graham, that's a smashing acoustic show. It's a Frog's Life Acoustic Podcast. It's a Frog's Life Acoustic Podcast. It's a Frog's Life Acoustic Podcast, hosted by Graham Holland. Based in Liverpool, we cover acoustic music of all kinds, all varieties and all locations. The It's a Frog's Life Acoustic Podcast. It's a Frog's Life Acoustic Podcast. It's a Frog's Life... Okay. <laughs> you, get, you get the idea. Um... Collaborative shows. I'm not precious about my show. Uh, if somebody wants to, to get involved in it, I say yes. I put together an idea for uh, for a um, a pod swap where different hosts host each other's shows, and um, yeah, we won't get you up to do that. And in the, in the end, only two of us actually actually did it because there are lots of the other podcasters cried out saying, "Oh, well, I don't want somebody to host my show." And I was, you know, I know what I'm doing and, and whatever, but. Um, I did mine, so this is, this is the, uh, the first one I did. Um, well, hello and welcome along to the It's a Frog's Life Acoustic Podcast, number 101. That's not me. And no, Graham hasn't suddenly turned into a Scotsman overnight. Uh, the lily pad has actually floated north this week. I'm hosting the show in Graham's place as part of the great Easter pod swap on the Association of Music Podcasting. My name's Grant Mason and I usually host the Three from Leith podcast here in the historic port of Leith in Edinburgh and my website is www.threefromleith.com And you go, so that was the first time I handed over the reins to, to somebody else. I was great fun. I hosted his show and had an apple the ball and that was a great, good way for, for, for me to get new listeners from, from him and for him to get new listeners from me. Uh, collaboration and being social. Um, and then, what do you get if you add my show? A comedy podcast from the UK called Clever Little Pod. An American scripted uh, comedy called Bells in the Bat Free. You get, it's a clever frog's little acoustic podcast life in the Bat Free. Um, I have... I had been doing uh, comedy specials um, and I thought it would be great if, uh, if Gary Green, who does Clever Little Pod, um, was to host the show. So I handed it over to him. Uh, the guy who does Bells on the Back, did the introduction to it, 
and um, Gary, um, uh, I, gave, I gave Gary all the songs and uh, he uh, joined it all together. Hello and welcome to the It's a Clever Little Frog's Acoustic Life Show Comedy Special 3 podcast. Britain's foremost independent reptilian based look at the acoustic music scene. Yes, this stream is for acoustics, not poo sticks. Yes, and um, yeah, there was a fun doing that. I, I, I had fun letting them do it as well. So uh, that's another way that, that, that you can be, uh, be uh, add the social to a podcasting is getting other people involved in the shows. Um, uh, the, this, uh, these are some of the some of the areas online. I mean, I'm probably preaching preach to the converted. When I first started, uh, MySpace was the place to be. I got a lot of my music and a lot of the you know uh, the uh, messages from uh, listeners uh, and um, musicians came through MySpace, and then uh, along came Facebook, and MySpace died. Um, so we're on Facebook as well, and uh, Twitter, oh, you've probably seen that, that's it, this is Frog Life, and the SoundCloud, you got the t-shirt, you got the, he's got the, the t-shirt, SoundCloud's great because it allows people to uh, upload um, music, musicians upload music, uh, and get it to me without clogging up my, my inbox uh, as well. Um, and ever since I moved uh, across uh, to WordPress, it's got things that, um, social uh, inter integration, so the, the WordPress um, blogging site links in with uh, Twitter and Facebook, and it all moves uh, together. Um, and we're using one called uh, Social from uh, Mailchimp. Uh, I found out it's got a name, Charlie, apparently. Um, and uh, there are other other plugins out there for uh, WordPress as well. So. Um, that's uh, that's uh, what I said. I'm just going to show you a couple more slides. Um, I do like to keep it fresh. One of the challenges uh, uh, for uh, for podcasts is, is is how to to keep it how to keep it going, um, keep the interest for, from yourself going. Uh, so uh, occasionally after um, specials, special theme shows, as so we've got the uh, the uh, hopping all over the world uh, at the top left hand corner. Um, the colour show, all the songs uh, had uh, colours in the names or the bands had colours in the names. Um, uh, Summer special, uh, I did a pirate one, that was fun. Um, and uh, just, just, to, just to try to keep it fresh and uh, keep it interesting for me as a podcaster, just so it doesn't be, just become samey samey, uh, hopefully for the listeners as well. Um, this is how I got into this, uh, got here on the on, on the back of the Liverpool Acoustic Spotlight, which I started in 2008. Um, and uh, that's a show, uh, it's, it's twice a month, uh, one show uh, uh, plays music from the artists that are due to appear at each of the, our live events, uh, Liverpool Acoustic Live events. And the other show is music that's been submitted directly to me uh, through our uh, SoundCloud Dropbox. Um, that's it. The only thing left is for uh, Uncle Seth. This was the big hit back in 2006, Canadian band Uncle Seth. I think it's probably the only hit they had and it was only hit with podcasters because it is a bit peaky but they, they decided because um, this is misnomer that you have to have an iPod to listen to the podcasts so they wrote this, uh, this, this uh, song. <laughs>
which tell me about the fun that you have during the show. It's like so many people do podcasts, and as you said, there's an enormous amount of drop off. And it's like people need to you know, get used to it, need to appreciate the, the fun behind it. Tell us a bit. I wouldn't do it. If it wasn't fun for me, I, would, I wouldn't do it. I, I just I enjoy discovering new music and I enjoy sharing that music with other people uh, through, through the show. Um, and I, I enjoy the recording process as well. As, as I said, I re record it live and uh, there's a spontaneity to that. There, there are some people that, that, that will record it and then there's a mis mistake or they stumble over the words and stuff. And stuff. Uh, and re-record is, and it takes up ages, but if I make a mistake, I just make a mistake. You know, if you make a mistake on the radio, there's no going back. Um, life's, too, life's too short, really. Uh, so, I, it's, it's, it's fun. I hope uh, people enjoy listening to it from the, the comments that I get, so that's the email and the comments on the, on the show notes, um, and from other podcasters as well. Um, it, it, it's, uh, it, it's fun. What I would say is that if you are thinking about starting podcasting yourself, there is help out there. And I, I, made, I made mistakes along the way, um, you know, and if I was doing it from, from scratch uh, now, uh, there is uh, uh, help out there. There are places where you can get help and advice. Um, so you're making it sound a bit like, you know, AA. It's going to get... Podcast doesn't want to listen. No, it's, it's, yeah, don't have um, to podcast if you don't want to. We can talk you down. Um, but uh, yeah, if, if anyone is interested, or, or if anyone's into, mu into music and they wanted to do a music podcast, then uh, I can uh, point you in the right direction. Um, just just simple things like um, having a having a name strategy for the show and uh, for the files and, and keeping that consistent throughout, so it doesn't pop up with different names or different different formats uh, from one show to the next when it comes up in iTunes. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's lots of fun, and I know uh, Dan has uh, lots of fun as well. It does take time, that's, you know, that's the only thing. I did a, did a presentation of podcast about how to, how to podcast for free, and I said it's almost free because the one thing it, the one thing that it does take is time, both the, both the preparation and the, the promotion of the show, uh, not so much the, the recording is, um, but uh, just getting it all together and putting the show notes together. But uh, it, is a, it is a lot of fun. As I said, I wouldn't do it if it wasn't. Great. Yes. All acoustic sounds like a great name for a live event. If there was a calendar of live acoustic club shows, where would we find that? <laughs> is that a loaded question? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you go to liverpoolacoustic.co.uk, yeah. He honestly, he honestly didn't know. If you go to liverpoolacoustic.co.uk, there is a, a, an online diary of acoustic events in Liverpool, the Greater Merseyside area. Um, Liverpool Acoustic as an organisation, we do host our own live events, but we publicise others around the park as well. And there's a, quite a comprehensive diary uh, for people to, uh, to check out. Yeah? Um, do, you do, do you do much non-internet publicity, like flyers or... Real magazine interviews and things like that. I mean, so when I say real magazine interviews, I said as opposed to online podcasting or promotion. So I, I, I used to do. I used to do flyers, um, but flyers cost money and costing cartridges. Um, and the vast majority of people I, I want, you know, I'm looking to, to reach out to um, are already on the internet anyway. Um, you're, you're not likely to convert someone to listen to a podcast if they're not already listening to podcasts. You're not really likely to convert them to listen to podcasts by giving them a flyer. Um, so I don't know uh, if, any, if, anyone else, if anyone else has tried that, but uh, there was a guy, in fact, C.C. Chapman, he came up with an idea. He used to put his shows onto, uh, onto CDs, uh, put a label on them, say these are, these are free, uh, go listen to them, and then come to this website and listen to the show. And when he's, he's flying across the States, he's sticking them into the uh, in, in flight magazines. <laughs> Some people pick them up, uh, then, oh, what's this? Oh, it's a free CD. And they take it away and listen to it. I don't know how successful that was either, but um, that's a, a, another way of doing it, of, of getting the word out there. Yeah. Any other questions? Yes. 
you're re recording music uh, and broadcasting it, as that's what you do. Do you run up against things like performing rights and all that kind of stuff? No, we get around this um, by uh, using what we, the, the term is pod safe. So it's music that, that is, uh, has been made available uh, for me as a podcaster to use. So it might be from places like the PodSafe Music Network or uh, Creative Commons music from sites like Jamendo or CC Hits. I don't know, you were mentioning that? Um, I use Jamendo a lot. Yeah. And getting artists to submit stuff was great. So, yeah. so right. and I can get under the tree if, uh, <laughs> if it's not if, um, yeah, if you get artists to submit stuff, like, you know, okay. send you their music, then they can give you permission. Because the vast majority of the independent right. artists, they own the copyright themselves. Yeah, so they're they able to say to me, give you we're giving you permission to play our music on the show. But if you went, say, to, to a venue where there was artists playing music by other people, then broadcasting that podcast would be advisable. Uh, pr probably not. Um, I mean, there's a certain amount you, you can get away with. So if it's in, if it's if I'm doing an interview and it's playing in the background, yeah. then I, legally I can get I can get away with that. Okay. Uh, if I was to record them uh, doing something, yeah. um, so then that's that's a no-no. Yeah, that, that, that's a no-no. Okay, thanks, Brian. There's fair use under copyright as well. Yeah. Of up to thirty seconds. Like yeah. Um, yeah. But it, it's I mean it's a bit of a thorny legal area. But yeah. you can use some music if you're using it for demonstration purposes. So if I talk about a song on my show yeah. and you're a co-host and you don't know what that song is, I could play you like 20 seconds of that song room, right. and then you go, oh yeah, that's what it is, because yeah. nobody's going to pinch that 20 seconds of the song. And there are other some artists that, that give me songs that are, submit songs to me that are covers. Um, yes. uh, for example, there's an artist called John Gordon who's done a cover of uh, uh, Police, a song by the police. Yeah. Um, and as far as far as I'm concerned, if he's given it to me to play, He's given the permission of that, um, and he needs, you know, if there's a problem with that, then that's his problem, not mine. <coughs> I don't understand legally with that, but most most music podcasters steer away from steer away from covers. There's enough okay. fantastic uh, original music out there from uh, from musicians. Um, you don't really need to, to, to look at covers. Just going to ask that. So say. Um, if you're talking to say an established act and you're talking them, to them one on one, say they're on a record label and they might have a publishing contract or whatever, yeah, and they, they say it's okay, is that does that then make it okay or could you run into problems? It depends who yeah. who owns the rights to the, to the song. I mean, you get into the areas of who owns the rights to the song and who owns the rights to the recording as well. Um, and there are some record companies that are okay with it. There are some that actually embrace uh, podcasting, and, make, and there's some like big names that have, you know, have, have actually put songs out there. I mean, when you go to the Positive Music, Music Network, there's a couple of tracks in from Deep Purple, which I'm not going to play on the acoustic podcast <laughs> for obvious reasons. Um, uh, but uh, you know, the, but you, you just you just need, need to be careful that you do have permission, and you have permission from the right people. Because the last thing you want is for uh, you know, the, the big record companies to come up and you know are saying uh, yeah, cease and desist. Are you yeah. making that big trouble? Yeah, you, you, you could, yeah, theoretically, yes. I mean, all you, need, you just need to see the, the trouble that some of these people have set up sites for file sharing sites, you know, and the, the um, record companies have actually come down really heavily, heavily on them. Um, you know, it, it's, it's not likely to, to happen. Um, but the last thing, last thing you want is, a, is, is to get into, into trouble. And as I said, there is so much Creative Commons music out there, so much music from independent artists that welcome the extra publicity. Then it seems a shame to play somebody who's on a major label, who's already got the back of that major label behind them anyway. Um, you know, whereas a, you know, an independent artist uh, who's trying to make it uh, We'll probably get more out of the publicity they'll get from being on a, a podcast that's heard around the world than uh, an established artist. Yeah. Have you ever uh, made any money out of it? Have I ever made any money out of it? Um, <coughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's a good question. Um, I don't know whether the day is going to be. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be mentioning this. Um, 
<laughs> is there any money from uh, is there any money from podcasting? No, there isn't. That is the simple answer. Um, there, there are some people, particularly at the very early years, that uh, thought that there would be. Um, and, um, I mean, there, are, there are a few people out there. That, that are, 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 there's a guy called uh, Richard Bones. Some of you might have heard of him. He started Charity for his podcast uh, and uh, had uh, various uh, levels of success for that. But uh, the vast majority of people are not going to pay, um, not unless you're uh, Ricky Gervais. And you've got, you've got the high profile, you know, and you can afford to charge it for people who are going to come and want it anyway. Um, but uh, as far as what I, what I do, I, I don't know anybody who, um, who actually uh, makes a living, or even makes uh, just a, a little bit of money to tie them over, kind of money from podcasting. Yes? What about sponsorship or anything like that? Uh, there are some, um, there are some uh, companies out there that do uh, sponsorship. If you go with, with um, pop, uh, uh, podcast services like Blueberry, they linked in, uh, they use the stats service and they, uh, they sell um, um, advertising campaigns uh, and people can sign up to them if it's something that's relevant to the show that they do. Um, and uh, things like GoDaddy are very big at uh, doing that kind of thing and uh, go to my, go to meeting. Um, they're big on advertising on podcasts as well, so you, you can get a, a bit of money from there. There are, I mean, some of the really popular shows on, uh, on what is now Medium um, have got some pretty decent um, pocket money out of, uh, out of the advertising on the shows, but uh, not enough to make a living from. But uh, there, there is, I mean, if, if you've got a really popular show and you can prove that with download stats. And you can find a, a company out there that, that, that wants to embrace it, then you, know, you might be looking and uh, get enough money to, to pay for the hosting. Brilliant, thank you very much.